Hello. Good morning. Can you all hear me okay? Yep. Yep. Awesome. All right. Uh, we'll wait till five after. Wait for Matthew to get here. Sounds good. Oh, are you waiting for Matthew Heideman, the speaker? Yeah. Yeah, that's me. Oh, okay. Hi, Matthew. <laughs> Oh, hi, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a nickname at uh, work since there's a lot of mats. Yeah. Same thing with Chris's. I got to change my mm -hmm. <laughs> Nice to meet you. Thanks for joining. Me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, we generally kind of wait till about five after to make sure folks trickle in, have some time there. And uh, do you have some uh, a deck or anything to present as well? Uh, yes, I do. Cool. So yeah, I'll put and load that up. Yeah, let me. I'll load it up and make this anyone with the link. That should be good. And then we do record it and we'll uh, publish it to the YouTube channel we have for the working group, if that's okay. Yeah, yeah that's totally fine. Cool. And then do we usually get uh, a few people uh, from the community on these? Uh, or is it kind of hit or miss? Yeah, it's usually a couple of folks who join in and then a number more watch it after the fact. Mm, cool, cool. And there's a sign up sheet if you guys want to sign in. Um, just a Google Doc, add your name in there. Okay. So how is the research going? Um, decently. Um, we've got a lot of good presentations from everybody about their languages so far. Um, now we kind of need some help compiling documents and use cases. So that's what we've had a hard time getting folks to uh, provide so far i'm gonna take a hopefully in a couple more weeks to be able to take another stab at that and then i'll be going around poking some folks about providing example queries in the documents and then after that we'll start reviewing things and start chatting about them cool cool um so, yeah, yeah i think that the presentations is going to be like a mixture of um the the presentation itself plus going into demos and kind of looking at queries at large um so yeah so hopefully uh, from this presentation we can answer some of the use cases um via some of the demos that we've put together already awesome yeah that'd be great i'm especially interested in the tracing use cases and the tracing joined with the metrics and how your customers have seen that so <laughs> Yeah, it's about five after. So, hi, Sergey. Uh, Sergey's on. He was presenting about the Microsoft um, language yes. uh, last year now already. So, <laughs> welcome. Yeah. A quick question, Chris, before we start. So, uh, do we wait for questions till the end of the session, or can we just like ask questions during the session? Or up to Matthew. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, we could probably ask questions during. There's a lot of material to cover. So, okay. If I if I see something that or if I hear a question that comes up later, I might defer it. 
Um, but yeah, the because there's a, just a lot to the language, um, we will try to get it through. But if you got questions, um, let's uh, we'll just answer them in line if we can. Awesome, thank you. All right, all right, and thank you to Matthew, Isaac, and Brett from ServiceNow uh, presenting about the UQL language and. Really excited about this one because it's one of the few that actually joins various telemetry types. So please mm -hmm. take it away. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, thank you. So I'm a, a product manager on um, Light, Lightstep slash ServiceNow Cloud Observability. Uh, the, my slides are all geared, have the old branding, uh, and I'm lazy and I haven't done any of the new rebranding. So sorry, marketing folks. Uh, but we're going to talk about UQL today. Um, uh, this presentation is built uh, by many people, um, so we'll just kind of we'll just go through and uh, just kick it off. So the agenda for today is we're going to talk about time series, we're going to talk about uh, logs, fetching logs, and then fetching uh, traces and spans. So we'll kind of get into some of the details of each, um, and then we'll start to show some demos. So the first one is around fetching time series with UQL. So the demo. Here, we'll just kick it out now. Um, so what we have here is just our basic sort of time series query. Um, in this case, we're using the logs data source to provide that. Um, and it's kind of composed of three elements. There's a fetch, the type, the logs count, uh, and a liner and a group by that's required for these queries. But this is kind of like maybe your standard sort of like how, because there's no filter, it's counting all the logs that are in the system. So sort of like a basic sort of frequency query. Um, if we go down here, we have, you know, we have a two metrics queries that are being joined together so that we can show the, the rate of change between this week and last week. Um, and so you can kind of see here, you know, we were getting maybe um, less requests compared to is that right? Less requests or more requests compared to last week. And now we're getting, uh, you know, less requests. So just kind of showing that you can do joining of two different metrics. You can shift by seven days to kind of get the, the period for that week. Um, and it produces, you know, these kind of time series graphs. The next one is around uh, the metric namespace. So, you know, for metrics, they have names. So this metric is named request. Um, and we're kind of, and this is a, a counter metric. So it's either a delta counter or a cumulative counter. Um, we can use various counters and um, they have an aligner, which is just this rate per second. Um, and then we can group based upon labels that are on or attributes that are on the, the metric themselves. So in this case, there's a metric called service. And then we can kind of see here in the UI that it breaks out each of the service uh, groups so this, you know, in this case, there's a there's a web service, there's an iOS service, an Android service, and then finally we're looking at all the services. So there's more than five, but we're just taking the top five based upon the summing all the points in the window. Um, and then let's see here. Um, this last one is just taking the P95 of all latency operations for the web service. Um, so once again, uh, now we're switching. We're using spans and we're using a specific attribute, a numerical attribute on the spans called latency. Where in the, in this latency, it's actually, um, it's still a, a counter, but it's a distribution. And so we're um, taking these distributions, adding them up with our Delta aligner, filtering them by various label attributes, grouping them also by various label attributes and adding all those distributions together to then at the very end do some point transformation on those distributions so that way we can do um you know the p95 so um, a little bit more complicated as we're going so we're but we're showing that you can kind of you can group things you can do transformations on the time series value um you can you know if you want to count the number of items in the distribution you can do something like that as well with a discount operator so we provide kind of various functions to manipulate and um, get um, distribution points into kind of a singular uh, numerical value. And then sort of finally, this was just released last week, but this is the ability to then um, take those two different time series queries. So we're taking a spans latency query where we're looking at um, the P95 latency for a particular service. And then we're taking, you know, we're doing some 
um, calculation over the bytes and seeing if there's any sort of relationship there. So uh, this is just kind of like the, the bytes divided by the latency, and we're kind of seeing if there's any interesting spikes that occur. Um, and then, you know, if we wanted to, we could run this over standard deviation to see how much it's changed and then do some, you know, statistical um, anomaly detection if we wanted to. Um, and I think that's it for just kind of the, this is like a very brief overview of just kind of all the things that are, that you can do with time series. Uh, so I'm going to take a pause here and have a sip of coffee if there's any questions. Cool. I, so now we'll just, oh, go for it. Yeah, I did have a question on the alignment operator, the delta versus rate and whatnot. Are those, um, I saw those required for spans and for metrics there. Is it um, dependent or does it do the right thing based on the type of incoming data, if it's monotonic counter, et cetera, or a, a rate counter? Um, I think, so there's, there's two counters that in OTEL, I think that where the delta miners used, it's in the the delta counters. So this would just be like the monotonically increasing counters. Um, and I think the cumulative counters, which are the same. Um, so it's also just monotonically increasing. Um, but I'm not sure about um, if it's a rate counter. I think then that maybe just translates to a gauge. Um, but I'm not exactly sure. Um, I don't know if Brett or um, Isaac have the answer to that. Not off the top of my head. Yeah, I, I want to say like those those kinds of like um, metrics that are just capturing like the points per second that they would be um, that they're probably more geared towards like a gauge metric. Um, and then we would treat those um, with a different aligner called either latest or a reducer, which we'll kind of get into in a little bit later. Oh, sorry, quick question from my side. So you guys keep a metadata about which type of counter is in the system? Or... Uh, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. And the other quick question. So <clears throat> maybe you'll cover it later. I got the impression that the data model, which is uh, language runs on top is uh, as long as you can find it, it's like you run it on top of tuples, right? So presentation of the data is like tuples, tables, like any insights on that? Um, As far as like maybe the 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 internal representation or like what we would present to the users? I'd say uh, like semantically, right? As a language, so what the language works with. Yeah, I would say that the language kind of operates on um, maybe one data structure for the time series, which is just a table of information. Okay. So you would have like a table um, where you'd have labels and rows, uh, or sorry, columns and rows and the rows would have the labels and there might be just like one column, which is the, the time series value. Okay, yeah. got it. Okay, cool, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is just a quick overview on the fundamental sort of time series operations, but you know, in the language we can fetch the time series, grab the points, we can modify each point. Uh, so, you know, like adding a hundred to a particular uh, metric um, we can take multiple points within a time bucket and we can collapse them into, you know, a value either using, um, you know, adding them up, taking the min or max. Um, there's various aligners that we'll get into. And then kind of finally, there's just the sort of cross time series operations where we're collapsing on the spatial dimension, all the different groups. So if, you know, if we wanted to collapse, um, you know, group, we don't want any dimensions. We could collapse these two groups into a dimensionless metric and, you know, either pick the min or max or some sort of algorithm for it. Um, so the sort of like typical UQL time series query, they all have like a very similar shape. Um, so, you know, and in the language, it's, it's a piped language. So each of these um, like operations that happens in the pipe, we call stage. Um, so in this case, the first phase, the first stage is fetching. Um, so this is where you kind of identify your data source that you want to pick from, what sort of kind of operation you want to do, or what sort of attribute do you want to pick um, off the the time series to then aggregate the aggregate up. Um, and then likewise, like with metrics, it's the the name of the metric. Then we have an alignment stage, 
um, which for all of the metrics or for all the time series is required. Um, and then optionally, you can do filters. You can also do uh, group buys, and there's many more stages. But this is kind of just like a typical uh, time series query. Yep. So quick question. The alignments is can it be considered like a temporal aggregation where you try to kind of bring all the data points to a single? That's correct. OK. Yeah. So you can imagine just taking, uh, if we were, um, like we, we have uh, different um, arguments to these stages. So for example, rate could take an argument where it says, look back um, the input window, look back one minute, uh, or you could say, look back 10 minutes, and then it would just aggregate all those points and then, then sort of calculate the rate. Oh, okay. So basically a rate has an optional parameter, something like that? Yep, exactly. Okay. Cool. And then just kind of the for the purposes of just this this slide, um, you know, it's it's just left off. Um, so it will it will take whatever. Um, so you can I guess maybe just to dig into this a little bit, you can also see like there's no um, windows in here for the the data that you want to get. That's kind of considered outside the request. Um, so we you know like the query um, should kind of work regardless, no matter sort of what window it's operating on. Um, so if you if you saw back in our UI, uh, here I'll just hit escape here for a second. You'll kind of see that uh, the time picker is uh, basically controlling the the window for the data that you see. Got it. Makes sense. Thank you. Yep. Um, so if I may ask, I, I didn't introduce myself. I'm working for KKR for observability. Um, I'm just curious how close this uh, model to exist in, for example, PromQL or Victoria languages. Oh, I, I have another slide deck uh, that covers that, but not in this one. Um, but maybe I could pull it up real quick. Um, but it's, I can, uh, let's see. Uh, do, 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 I think we have one slide that kind of talks about the differences here. Um, so I'll just turn this on for a second, which is uh, for PromQL, it's sort of, um, you kind of like start at the innermost level and kind of work your way out because you're you're using these um, functions to wrap the the data, but it's somewhat similar. I would say that the the like for the rate, the biggest difference is uh, I think like you would have to use a Grafana sort of variable or something to represent um, a dynamic range. Um, but uh, I don't know if this has been updated recently with the language, so I'm not exactly sure if this is still required, but you do need to put some sort of, from what I remember, you need to put some sort mm -hmm. of interval, uh, and this would be sort of dictated by the, the querying system that you're using. Um, and then for example, if we kind of walk the, this like simple metrics request um, with Prometheus, you don't have to specify, you know, the types because they, it only works on metrics, but you would, you know, here we kind of have this map of metric name to request. The filter sort of map, maps to this labels parameter. Um, it's a little bit different because I think all of the Prometheus labels are only string labels, but we can handle, um, various because of hotel like has types we can also handle typed uh label attributes so if you want to do numerical comparison on a status code that's something that you know like we can kind of do in our system and then uh the rate is kind of outside here um so it kind of wraps this whole sort of initial request and then um rather than there being a sum operation or these sort of aggregation operations um, we just have a, a single stage called group by with many reducers that you can use. Um, so I'd say that's that's maybe the similarities to it. And then the difference is, you know, like you can now aggregate across spans and you can aggregate across logs in the same language. You don't have to use a different language to do that. So what you're just telling me, just take as an example, you have PromQL, you have LogQL, and you can do the same language on Tampa. So they have similar but uh, slightly three different languages. What you claim your language will be capable to do this across uh, three different platforms, which is metrics, logs, and traces. Is this the right statement? That's correct. Yeah. And it's uh, you know, it's something that we do in the product currently today. And um, what is format of your metrics? Because mostly people use an ORATEL format. 
open telemetry format or Prometheus format. So would it be possible to use your language against of a Prometheus format, for example? Would you understand that? Uh, yeah, I think we. I think our system does some translation um, internally to the OTEL format. Um, so, like, we kind of just normalize everything to OTEL um, for at least the metrics requests. Um, and I think it's the same for like logs and spans. Uh, we just kind of use the that sort of shape of input into the system. But the customer, you know, this is just more of probably details of our system but the, the customer could send it in any format and we would do that translation, like the Prometheus format, we would do that translation for them. Another big uh, uh, advantage of, um, and again, I'm coming from Victoria and later to Prometheus, they have quite significant statistical options. Victoria probably the best one in this class. So would you mind to show me what your uh, range of statistical uh, operator that you can use for your language? Um, I, I'm, I can probably direct you to the reference. Um, it's not as great as Prometheus. Um, that's, that's you know, we're still far behind on that. Um, but I think the, the kind of range is anywhere from, you know, you can do sort of z-score calculations with standard deviation. Uh, you can do interquantile range calculations. Um, but the there's a lot of functions that um, you know we've we've not implemented just yet, uh, but uh, you know with time and enough engineering effort, we could uh, potentially implement all of them. But there's there's certain ones that we've chosen, uh, but uh, I could probably get you that list maybe later, um, kind of to do that full comparison. Okay, and let's say hypothetically, I would use uh, a tail collector. And I would push my metrics and logs in native hotel format. I'm not going to convert by using processor to Prometheus format. Would you be able by using native uh, open telemetry format to use your language to query? Yeah, hotel? I think as long as you send things, uh, as long the the model's probably a little agnostic to it, but. Uh, for our particular system, if you were to send us anything through the hotel, hotel collector, um, we would then be able to query against it. So, but we need to use processor to convert this to your format, or are you just using pure hotel format as is? Just the pure hotel format. Okay. So there's no, um, there's no ingestion or what would be, I think it's like, um, what they call it in hotel, like an exporter. There's no custom exporter for us. We just... We'll, we just handle the raw hotel format. Okay. Thank you. Yep. And then there's a hand up. Yeah, real well, one last question. I promise I'll shut up. Um as a user, okay. can I <laughs> can I switch the order or the order is kind of hard coded? Can I do let's say group by for uh, special first and then do temporal? Like do the group by and then rate? Uh I think for um, we require the temporal operations first, okay. Um, but the the like, but it doesn't matter as far as like you could switch the order of filter and rate since they're um, commutative operations. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the and correct me, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Isaac or Brett. But the the group by it would happen at the end. Oh, okay, so I cannot do group uh, spatial and then temporal. So it's temporal first and spatial. I believe that's correct. Okay. Okay, cool. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah. The reasoning there is just a lot of times folks will have like, they'll be trying to do something and the reporters will be slightly off by like a couple seconds or something. And we want to make sure they get everything lined up before they actually do the grouping because they might, they might get some uh, inconsistencies then. Yeah, yeah, sure. You need to align if you want to do the spatial. I just was wondering if you can do like multiple levels of um, temporal. We see sometimes, sometimes this type of use case. Oh, oh yeah. You could do temporal after grouping too. Oh, okay. So um, you can do, do temporal two stages. Spatial. Yeah. You do temporal, spatial, temporal, spatial, temporal, spatial. Yeah. Got it. Awesome. Thank yeah, you. There's some amount of reordering that can happen here uh, just because some of this is pushed down, but uh, so it, it's folded down into a single concept in our, in under the hood. But, um, but like what Isaac said, you can inter, inter, interleave these things after you've kind of fetched the data and are going to do some processing on it. I see. No, I got the motivation. You need to align first and then, uh, yeah, makes sense. Thank you.
Uh, and so, yeah, I guess then just the very quick slide, it's there are similarities to SQL. This is kind of maybe a select plus from. Uh, we have, you know, I think there's kind of like syntax for like partition over these groups in SQL, but it's not really, um, not really great. And then from the filter syntax, this is more like a where and a group by. Um, so, so yeah, I might, we kind of went over this. So I just, in the sake of time, I might skip over some of these. Um, maybe the one that I will talk about a little bit is just kind of like, um, for spans and logs groups are required as a part of the, the um, as a part of the full query. Um, and this is mainly because just that time to, or spans themselves have too many sort of unique attributes and like basically each span, if you were to include trace ID would be its own little tiny time series. So we need some dimensions to aggregate at kind of like a, a much higher level. Uh, and so in this case, this is showing just how um, if we were to read uh, just kind of the operations of spans and we could count them. Uh, so in this case, we are, you know, we're looking at two operations for this time bucket here. Um, we're looking for one operation for this time bucket here. And then uh, there's no spans that happen at this point in time um, so that there's there's no there's no counting for that, that time bucket. Oops, uh, I didn't mean to do that. Let me hit play. Um, so we'll get into this a little bit more, but there's the alignment stage. There are these um, different alignment operations slash stages called delta rate, latest, and reduce. Um, and we'll get that into that a little bit more later. Um, filtering, uh, there's a lot of different filtering operations that you can use. Um, so you can do equals, regular expressions for strings. You can do case uh, insensitive searching for contains on strings. Um, for numerical attributes, which is maybe like a difference between maybe us and other systems is that if you send in numerical attributes in Hotel, we'll sort of honor them and you can do numerical comparison against them. Um, and then attribute existence, attribute presence. Um, these are useful in the cases of spans where, you know, you want to maybe filter to where only this is defined, or maybe you're doing some um, you want to check compliance against your system. And so you want to see where it's not defined. Uh, maybe you want all of your spans to have a Kate's label. Um, and now you want to look to see where those are all defined or undefined and then go maybe fix it. Um, we talked about grouping, uh, but the, the last thing is just that um, there's many sort of supported reducers and the reducers are used in between the temporal aggregation and the spatial aggregations. Um, I think yeah, maybe one slide on kind of all the different ones that we support. Uh, Sergey? Yeah, really quick on the filtering capabilities. So would it be possible to, let's say, uh, filter out series where let's say average, overall average per time series is less than 100? Um, the... can you, I mean, like, do can you do the scalar aggregations to kind of, and then use the comparison? Yeah, I think you, you have to do them in two operations. Uh -huh. um, so like, for example, uh, if you want to take the average, um, so how would you do this? You would take sort of the average, you'd get the average time series that you meet some sort of criteria. So like, for example, if you wanted the time series over 30%, you would do that as one query. And then the second query would be joining that in for joining kind of the original data oh, with a query. So that way you, you sort of limit it. And that's kind of currently how we do um, that sort of filtering on aggregated values. Got it. Got it. Cool. Thank you. Uh, can I ask a question? I'm coming back. Um, it's a quite unusual and good. So the same language can work against the traces and logs. Um, and if I remember when um, Grafana people try to sell their a lot PQL, they say so it's extremely efficient and speedy because they do not index anything. They just use major labels just to run all this stuff. So as I understand, they're using the same concept. Everything set on labels, on tags only. And you do all your operations based on tags or labels. Is this correct, correct statement? Uh I would say, you know, we, in our case, we, I believe, build indexes on all of our different 
uh, tags and attributes. So maybe that's where we're different. Um, the and so in that case, um, because we have those indexes, we can we can do filtering. But I, I think this would apply even if you were on, under a different model, like these same filters, um, you know, could be applied to the traces themselves potentially. Oh. I understand there's always beauty on both sides. So, but again, when they just promote this solution, they said, for example, uh, Splunk is a great tool, but uh, can provide a lot of flexibility due to index ability, but it cannot be considered as a real time uh, service. So, it's not speed enough. And they're using just limited number of uh, levels. So, my question did you at least try to uh, um, benchmark your tool against those for Prometheus? So, for the same set of data and tell are you on the same uh, range of execution time? Um, I don't know if we have any specific benchmarks against Grafana, um, but uh, I can say, like, I can say, like, it, it is a pretty speedy system um, for, you know, like, especially if we're looking at you know, hours or, you know, weeks of data, like we, it, it really depends on, uh, I would say the cardinality of the labels. So for example, in if, for example, with like filter service equals web, you know, we can do a 14 day query over billions of spans, um, and produce, you know, rates requests per second, uh, mm -hmm. pretty quickly. Um, so I, I don't think that's, has been like an, an issue for our customers. Um, mm -hmm. But the the use cases where you know you have you know like you want to produce groups on millions of user IDs maybe that's where our system um, doesn't do as well because we have these indexes that are focused on collapsing a lot of data um, you know so I would say maybe that's the the system differences but in terms of the the language um, it seems like you know any sort of filtering operation could be pushed down to any sort of system. Okay. Um, let's see. So we talked a little bit about group by. Um, I'm going to skip over this. Uh, let's see what demo we have here. Um, so this is just kind of taking the knowledge that we already have, uh, which is you know like we can we can build these. We're going to build up this request. So kind of going back to the the first question, which was like. Do you need rate or um, can you change the order? We'll kind of get into it a little bit. Um, but in this particular case, uh, we're looking at the metric request and rate. Um, so this looks like there's hundreds of sort of time series uh, related to this particular named metric. We then uh, add a filter. So we're looking at service web. So we've obviously reduced the number of time series that are here. Um, we then, um, we now change our kind of query. We're now looking at spans count. Um, where we're grouping by operation. So we're doing filtering and we're doing grouping based upon uh, spans, you know, a particular service web for operations that start with API for only the entry points, which is the span kind server. We then, um, you know, get back this collection of operations, uh, collection of time series that match the operations. Um, and then finally, um, you can kind of see we're doing we're comparing a metric that's being generated for a particular operation called metric request for this web service. And we can kind of uh, narrow in where we are looking at a particular operation that sort of mimics this just from the spans count. So you can kind of see, uh, you know, the blue line is derived from spans and the orange line is derived from the metrics. And so we're kind of just showing two queries in one chart, but we're, you're able to kind of get the similar information um, depending upon how you, you know, um, how you send it to our system. So in a lot of cases, you can just use the spam count as opposed to the metric request. Um, you can kind of interchange them if you wanted to. Um, and then let's see. Um, so Delta, I'm just, I, I'll just briefly sort of talk about to this. Um, but this is, you know, like um, for all of our counter metrics, this is the maybe the more complicated aligner to understand because a lot of other different languages call this, um, they might have the same name, but that it kind of means something different. Um, but in our case, um, this is looking at, uh, let's say, a delta counter metric that says, you know, for this time period, I've spanned, uh, I've collected, you know, 
12 counts of this metric, um, but it spans over 90 seconds. If we were to look at our Delta aligner, these are kind of the optional parameters. For this example, we're just gonna make them all required. So what this is saying, this last argument is saying, I want points spaced um, at one minute apart for this time range. So we have three points. Um, and then from that one minute output period, I wanna look back one minute and then you know uh, do some aggregation. In this case, we're just gonna sum up all the points that are associated with this, this counter. Um, so you can kind of see real quickly that the this span uh, spans two minutes. It's 90 seconds long. So we do some linear interpolation for this first minute. And we say, hey, you know, eight points is attributed to the, the, the first minute here. And then four points is uh, directed towards the second minute. Um, and then finally, this last one that happens in the third minute, there's now five points. And then we'll just build this up a little bit, which is um, for the same output period, but now we're looking back even further. So we're looking back two minutes. Um, we'll we'll do sort of the the same calculation, um, but in this case, you know, like we look ninety minutes, we linearly interpolate this so that there's only eight points. But then when we go to the second minute, we can now collect all the points that are here. We have um, 12, you know, like we get the whole counter. So we get the whole 12 points. Um, and then uh, we represent that as a dot here. And then likewise, um, the now we do some linear interpolation between these minutes. And now we have four points over here, five points over here, and that gives us our nine. So that's kind of the basic of how our delta counter works and uh, or like the delta stage for alignment. And it's the same sort of um, it doesn't matter if it's a delta counter or a cumulative counter, the same sort of logic applies. Uh, I'm maybe going to skip over some of this just in the sake of time. Uh, yeah, question? Just really quick, you mentioned that this logic is uh, the same which is used for alignment as well? Yeah, the, that what uh, this stage is, is one of our delta state or one of our aligner stages. Okay, okay, cool. Thank you. Yep. And then um, just to kind of do another, like just an overview of the other ones. Um, so rate is kind of, you know, similar to our delta aligner, but it's just doing divided duration seconds. Uh, so that gives you the rate per second. Latest is just taking, if we had a collection of three points here with three values, it's just going to take the last one. Um, so that would be represented on four. And then, you know, you can also use a reducer stage, which takes in a, you know, a required reducer. Uh, so in this case, you could say reduce sum or reduce max. And so if we were to say reduce sum, we would just sum up the points here. And so we would have 10, you know, a value of 10 for this point. Uh, and if we did the max, we'd have a value of four. Um, but those are the different temporal liners. Uh, so there's four in total, uh, delta, rate, latest, and reduce. And the reducers, just a quick slide from our documentation. Um, you can do, and kind of asking towards like maybe what sort of statistical functions, this, these are very basic ones, but, you know, taking the min, the mean, the max of the, you know, either a spatial or temporal dimension, um, also turning those into a distribution. So just capturing the frequency of how often those points show up. Um, this is useful if you're doing like a IQR scoring or interquantile range scoring of your points. Um, we also have standard deviation for the other statistical functions as well as counting and counting anything that's not zero. Um, so getting into the temporal liners, um, so this one is showing, you know, smooth request versus uh, unsmooth request. Um, and so the unsmooth is, doesn't have any input window look back. It's just using um, the, the output period that's determined by this um, range, uh, which we call the global output period. Uh, but effectively, it's how the points are spaced. So if the, you know, in this case, if it's an hour, the points are spaced, I think, every 15 seconds or every 30 seconds. Um, so the input window and the output window will be 30 seconds. And in this case, we've uh, we've specified it to look back even further. So for every you know 15 seconds, every point produced that's every 15 seconds, 
we aggregate over five minutes and that's how we get, get this kind of nice smooth line as opposed to this jagged line, which is reflecting the raw data. Um, uh, there's talk about like, can we stack multiple liners? This is kind of one of these cases. Uh, this is a little bit complicated, but the the request here is the name that name of the metric we're looking at. We're doing some filtering to get us to one time series. Um, but now we're looking at a rate, you know, we're looking at points spaced every minute, looking back one minute, and the then we're looking at the the value of each time series or the value of each point and saying if it's greater than 12, we're, you know, keep the point or remove it. Um, and then of those points for a 10 minute block, we're then gonna count them. And so this is kind of like, um, kind of like almost simulating, I think like Prometheus's four syntax in their alerts. Um, but you know, like you can say, hey, like I don't want this alert to fire every 10 minutes, um, but I need 10 of them in order for me to fire that alert. Um, so, but kind of showing you that you can stack multiple liners, you can do point filtering on the time series. Um, and then the last one here uh, is just kind of showing the difference between, uh, you know, picking the last value of the time series, which can be, you know, can often represent some variation versus picking the max time series in a one minute, the max value in a one minute bucket. Um, so you, yeah, you have various different options. Um, some of them are controlled by, you know, the, the overall query window, some of them you can manually specify. And then maybe the one thing I didn't mention is that if you use two um, aligners, um, you know, the first aligner needs, you need to specify what the point spacing is or how, you know, like what is the input into the next stage here? Um, so those are required arguments if there's a final reducer. Um, Ooh, let's see what else do I have. Uh, all right, so now we're going to shift gears. We're going to get out of time series, and we're going to go to traces. Um, so, oh, yep, quick question, or right, go for it. Yeah, really quick before we go. So, uh, on the time series um, uh, aspect, do you guys support any like complex data points types, histograms, exemplars, HLLs, anything else natively? Yeah. Yeah, so we, I think we support uh, distributions or the, the I think it's like the standard distributions and then the exponential histograms uh, that come out from OTEL. So any of the supported distribution types that OTEL uh, submits, uh, we support uh, as well as other. So like, for example, this is just a counter counting the values, um, but this could have been um, a distribution metric counting the number of times a certain bytes have been seen uh, or the frequency of bytes. So that way you could do like a P95 of your bytes. So definitely the metrics could be any type. And then for spans, uh, I'll just show, um, I'll just add one query here. Uh, we can do something like spans, oh, wake up keyboard, spans latency. So here, this latency attribute is a distribution um, since we're capturing the, the various latencies that happen per span. Um, and then we can just do something like this. Um, so now we're summing up this distribution. It doesn't like this line chart. Uh, let me just play this forward. It's going to complain. Uh, and we're going to switch this over to a heat map, which is kind of accurately maybe describing the distribution. So in this case, we've got, uh, well, it looks last 10 weeks is pretty far. Let's do last 60 minutes. Um, but you can kind of see we're now plotting the distributions, various counts for the various ranges in the time series. And it's using sort of an exponential um, histogram model underneath. Um, I think our, ours uses circle hist, but you know, it's this model's flexible to support any sort of distribution type. Awesome, thank you. Yep. Well, yeah, and it, um, just real quick, it is the end of normal time, but feel free, we can keep going um, for anybody else to drop off. Uh, thank you very much, and please sign the sign-in sheet, and, and uh, yeah, keep on going. All right, I'll try to, I'll try to wrap this up in hopefully uh, less than 15 minutes. Um, so now we're getting in, so we're moving away from time series, now we're fetching 
um, sort of individual objects in the system. Um, so I'll just kind of quickly go over what we have so far, which is fetching uh, traces. Uh, so the syntax looks a, a little bit different, um, but the basic idea is that we're going to take um, a sample of all the spans in our system where service equals web, and then we're going to build a trace based upon each of the seed spans that um, that we get here. And so kind of like visually what this looks like is if we were to say, you know, we're going to get the service equals web, we're going to find spans that match this. Uh, so we'll, in this case, we have two spans, about one around getting a user and another around posting the payment. And then we're going to pipe this into the assemble function, which will then build us a set of, build a, a trace data structure, which, you know, basically shows the, the call graph um, between all these different operations. Um, and so that is the, the basics sort of of assembling traces in our system. And then uh, you can do other operations. You can do filtering. So in this case, we only want to show uh, traces where there's an operation equals submit payment anywhere else in the trace. Um, and how that might look like is something like this, where you've, you've done the assemble stage. So here's your trace. And now we're looking for anything that has submit payment. So we'll walk this uh, you know, call graph and we'll look for any operations that equal payment. So in this case, there is no submit payment. Um, and then in this case, there is. Um, and there's a small typo, which that should be a hyphen instead of an equals. Um, but uh, the, the point is yet, yeah, like we now have only from the sample and from the ones that we've traced or that we've gathered, uh, we have this collection of traces. Um, and so I think currently this, this power is like a, a scatter plot graph, um, but you can sort of imagine that this could power sort of any sort of visualization, like a trace list, um, which I think we're about to release in our system. But um, you know, a list of traces, you know, um, you know, doing some more complicated um, computation on this as well. Uh, so, like, if you wanted to collect the average number of spans uh, that happen in all these traces, or something like that, that's something that the system can do. Um, and oops, I think this is the almost the last, the last second to last demo. Um, but you can kind of he see here, this is the first query where we're looking for anything that um, touches the web service. And then we assemble a trace and then you can click into our system and then you can kind of see this trace view of the, you know, of the trace that we've assembled and built out. Um, and yeah, and then and then in our system, it just kind of highlights what are errors versus um, you know non-error spans. And then a little bit more complicated one, uh, same example, but now we're we're finding all of the spans that have service equals web. Now we're filtering on operation um, submit anywhere in the trace. And now you can see, even though the seed spans might have been different, like we found a make payment span to begin with there is still a submit payment in this trace. And then we talked a little bit about aggregation, but this is, you know, maybe you're interested in operations that uh, have, you know, a SQL select, but you want to organize them by customer. Um, so like you want to see maybe which customer from the sample um, is exhibiting either the largest uh, span, seed span latency or trace latency. Um, and so you can kind of do that in this, this type of query where it builds out these aggregates um, showing the average span latency, um, you know, depending upon how many customers uh, show up in the trace. Yeah. Sorry, I'm annoying. Um, just a quick question. So it seems like um, you guys, and uh, this impression that you get from the language, uh, I see that uh, operations are somewhat different, right? So basically, instead of group by, you guys use summarize for filtering is like trace filter. So is this the way you kind of try to approach different data types? Like if it works with traces, that's how you kind of approach the filtering. If you work with series, this is the other operation to approach the series. Is this uh, the overall like a logic or um, idea behind the language to kind of unify it through the different uh, semantic operations? Yeah, I think the you know for um, for these different trace operations, or if we wanted to get maybe the raw spans, we kind of want a different entry point um, for the language. But 
yeah, as the different return types come back from each stage, there's only a select number of stages that are applicable to them. So in the case of like in this first stage, let's say return spans, there's only maybe um, the assembly stage or the summarization stage if you want to turn those into traces. But it's kind of like, I think to your, it's a yes to your question. Okay, makes sense. Thank you. Um, I had a question too. Yeah. Um, yeah. On the trace side there, um, the first question is, do you support kind of parent-child relationships and the filtering? And the yeah. second one would be, have you had requests for full subgraph filtering to be able to say, you know, span A came, uh, hit span C and span D? Uh, you know. Yeah, uh, so definitely we've had uh, requests for either the, the, like the full graph or the immediate children, the, you know, a, a, a distant relative kind of queries. Um, we don't support them in the language yet, um, but we've kind of, um, we've, we've spec'd out some things on how we might want to call that, um, but we haven't built it into the product just yet. Okay, but uh, that being said, like, uh, definitely do want to support it. Uh, yeah. Um, let's see here. Um, and then the last part is logs. So now this is just fetching the log messages. Um, and I'll just go straight into the demo. Um, but this is getting, you know, the a thousand of the most recent logs. Once again, there's no... Um, the envelope parameters right now uh, for like limit and things like that are outside the, the the query itself. So you don't have to specify time or the limit. It, this just kind of, the system does that automatically and it would be outside the query. Um, and so here we're showing a list of the, you know, the most thousand recent logs. Uh, and then here's another example where we're, you know, showing, um, you know, the, where any service name has auth in any auth anywhere in the name. Um, so we're kind of limiting now the logs and filtering the logs to a certain subset. And I think that might be it. Oh, um, in this presentation, we have uh, a link to our cheat sheet, which is on our website. Uh, oops, that's the wrong cheat sheet. Uh, I will update that. Uh, but there's a link here to uh, the public docs that has the UQL reference that kind of talks about the time series fetch stages, the aligners, uh, the trace queries, logs queries, um, and all the various sort of arguments in here. So if you're interested um, in kind of our documentation, this is the place to look. Also, uh, the cheat sheet kind of talks about various use cases and how you can um, build out a query with all of our different stages. Um, so definitely feel free to check those out. Um, yeah. And I think, uh, I think there's like, you maybe had one other question, which was like um, learnings. Um, mm -hmm. and I don't know, Isaac, I don't know if you, <laughs> to put you on the spot, I think maybe some of our learnings still are um maybe around like trying to separate out the logic <clears throat> sort of query model versus the execution model um you know like i think you know in a, in this particular case if we go back to the span sample request um this is this language is maybe more akin to our storage system how we get information out of it um as opposed to, you know, like our log system where you can just ask for the um, a thousand uh, of the, the most recent logs. And we don't really have the same sy symmetry over here. Um, so maybe that's something that we might do differently um, in the future. But I don't know if there's anything else in your head, Isaac, uh, that kind of qualifies as learnings or things we might do differently. Yeah. I have various like nits, I think. I think one of them is is the aligners actually. I, I really like the way that um, some other languages have the aligners more unified. Like we have these four different ones. I think they could all be combined into a, into one, basically. Um, it just is a little confusing. Like 
delta seems to be summing points. Reduce sum also seems to be summing points. What's the difference? Well, the difference is one of them works on gauge types and one of them works on a delta and cumulative types. So I, I think if if we were to do this again, I think I would we'd focus on the hardest problem first. And I think the hardest problem in time series is 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 temporal alignment. I think that's the thing I've seen customers struggle the most with. Um, so there's definitely other stuff too. <laughs> that's what's top of mind. How about working with a different data types? So if customers had problems kind of wrapping their heads around, or has that been pretty obvious given the syntax? I, I think the um, the I think this one for traces is a little uh, hard for customers to understand, um, mainly because I think they're looking they're grasping for something that might like a stage that starts with trace, um, as opposed to kind of the buildup that we do. Um, but I think for logs is totally fine. Uh, the time series queries. So like, uh, there's a, like a very small difference between a time series query for logs, uh, which I didn't really demonstrate here. Um, but like, for example, logs, just having this, um, gives you the time or the, the list of logs back. But then when you do this, this does aggregation and this seems to feel somewhat good for most customers. Like they seem to understand that, um, that distinction pretty well. Um, and then same with like, uh, for spans being able to pick, you know, any sort of numeric, uh, attribute, like let's say status code, if we wanted to, you know, sum all those up and then turn those, oh, turn those into, you know, a heat map of some kind, like that that mental model seems to also work pretty well, which is like we're just picking one attribute and building a time series from it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, another question kind of on the API or the output um, model for this. Since you could query the types and you, um, a lot of the joining appears to be around converting traces and logs to metrics so that you can do the proper time series generalization. Um, have you looked or do you have the capability of trying to emit both a time series and then also log examplers or trace examplers in the same payload? Or have you decided to, that it makes more sense to maybe provide that query to an API and then split it out, run it on different backends, and then collect the different responses in different formats? Yeah, so I think we have thoughts on that. Um, currently, I think we do the, the latter, which is we will um, hit different endpoints. We will you know, we'll give time series queries and we'll ask for, like for example, on this spans query, we're asking for the exemplars, um, which we can kind of fetch from the system. Um, and so this is very similar to a span sample query, but it's a little bit different because these can have nested joints and we need to kind of like disentangle the, all the, the meaning of the what you want from the exemplars to come back. I think there's there's definitely another approach, which is, you know, as we build this time series information, we just collect exemplars along the way. Um, and same with like uh, for log messages. Although it might be like a little bit different because most customers, I think, in the logs use case are curious about like, the most recent as opposed to like what we do with spans, which is the sampling aspect. Um, but you know, that, that could also be different parameters on the envelope to specify kind of what sort of exemplars do you want to come back? Um, but yeah, like for example, on this logs count, oh, I should just change it back, um, for this logs count query, um, I think right now we, uh, if we do a time series, we will then uh, have this list that is generated from that time se time series. But it's a separate query with the the filter, whatever filters that came across. Um, you know, it just basically is that same query that comes there that way. But yeah, uh, I don't know if if we have a strong opinion on which way is better or not um, just yet. Cool, that makes sense. And then for joining kind of logs data, if the log contains information that they want to extract um, and use as labels to join on maybe a metric or a trace, is that possible right now? Or does that kind of data have to be present in 
tags on the log entry. Uh, are you say, say that, um, say that again, so there's maybe some information that's in a label, um, or, like yeah, a partial value that you want to extract? So well, that, um, you, I'm thinking more like the body of the log message that it may not have, let's say there's a host name in there that wasn't added for some reason to a tag on the log entry. Uh, yeah, so right now we don't have that, um, like extracting, um, information from like the either the body or various values. Um, but I think that's something um, we're kind of thinking about with um, a set of work that we're calling like field transformation. But it's uh, the ability to sort of extract information, use that as um, then keys as join operations. But I don't, we don't have that currently in the language. Um, awesome. Kind of like almost like a parse message stage. Um, to then produce new um, keys and values so that you could join. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. If I might, if I might jump in, I think I, I think we direct customers towards doing some ingest time renaming. In that case, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yep, definitely that makes sense. But then you can't always count on them to actually do it. Yeah. Totally, totally, <laughs> yeah. I guess one final question. I know you guys got to run. Um, do you think this will be easily extendable to support uh, kind of time series analysis on top of profile data? Well, that's an interesting question. I, I, I'm not super familiar with the data type, and but it feels like it's pretty much like tracing. Yeah. Yeah, just so, a couple uh, extra statistics tacked in. Yeah, yeah I don't know. What's your kind of initial thought, Isaac? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it does. <laughs> That's cool. I never even thought of that. Um, yeah, it seems like a trace. You've got parents. You've got a numeric attributes. Um, mm -hmm. I I think saying anything would be without without literally having heard this fifteen seconds ago would be dishonest. But it, it seems like it could it seems like it could be similar enough to work well. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think there'd be a lot th there'd be a lot more focus though. I think on like I need this thing in the context of this parent, you know, because a, a lot like it's very very common to have like the same function called in like ten different places in a in a flame graph or whatever. That's not something we do well today mm -hmm. at, at high, high volume. So if you're looking at like, if you want to look at like millions of profiles or whatever, we we, we can't really do that super fast. Um, I guess if it, looking in the context of this language, like we have the time series path, which is really fast and uses our indexes, but doesn't look at the whole trace very well. And then we have the span sample path, which is much slower but does look at the whole trace. So we'd mm. probably have to do this th through the span sample path, which would be right. fine if we're doing a small number of things. Yeah, and you're right. You probably need that parent-child relationship logic in the query too. In time. I yeah. guess And one more final, final question <laughs> is, do you have kind of a rough gauge as to number of customers that are actually correlating metrics or logs and traces in the same query? Uh, since we just released it last week, um, oh. The it, it's used internally a bit, uh, but we've just like, we've finally fulfilled that promise. Uh, so I don't have any sort of uh, hard data on it just yet. Um, okay. But it is, a, it is a very common requested feature. Cool. Uh, so, you know, in a lot of the, the conversations that we have with, you know, um, customers or POCs, like that's kind of the first question that they ask when they see the language. Um, and be able to do that kind of interesting relationships. Um, you know, I think there's there's logically kind of a next step where you can take that, where it's like now you can do Pearson correlation on these kind of two attributes uh, or these two time series that are coming in and um, produce different types of uh, metadata over it. We haven't really got to that stage yet, um, but it's just mainly the sort of like simple ratios for right now, um, which still seem of interest for a lot of customers and. Um, I think the alert building is also where they'd like to see it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. Awesome. Cool. Well, um, do you have any questions for me or? 
No, I mean, I think uh, I'll probably try to stop by. Uh, I guess it's the next one in two weeks. Um, and then if you all need any help as far as the use case gathering, um, we've got tons of them. So um, oh, it's just a matter yeah, of like sense. putting it into documents. Um, we could probably help out with that for sure. Okay. Yeah, I'll be pinging you on that. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Yeah, and if you could drop uh, slides or any links you want in that uh, attendance doc, that would be awesome too. So folks right. can reference it, please. Great. Well, thank you all very much for uh, your presentation. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having Good us. Good to meet you, Chris. All right. Nice to meet you guys, Isaac, Matthew. All right. Take care.